So to start with and introduce AstroPy to you, I just want to jump in and go ahead and read the, uh, the AstroPy mission statement. So that reads, the AstroPy project is a community effort to develop a single core package for astronomy in Python and foster interoperability between Python astronomy packages. Uh, you can read a little bit more about that uh, on this uh, docs page with our vision statement as well as uh, the main uh, site webpage, astropy.org. So um, <coughs> that's, a, that's a fairly ambitious statement. So to accomplish this mission goal, uh, the project does encom uh, encompass a bunch of different elements. So first and foremost uh, at the top is infrastructure. So in a very real sense, uh, <coughs> one of our highest priorities is infrastructure, uh, which can support the development of high quality and sustainable code base that can be used by the community and developed by a community which has uh, varying degrees of software development skills. And I'm talking about astronomers. So we need that solid infrastructure there uh, to begin with. So the next thing, obviously, is the, uh, the main core package. Um, that has all the classes and utilities uh, which are intended to address the basic common needs uh, for astronomy for doing research analysis and, and software development. Uh, the next thing which is kind of interesting about AstroPy is, uh, as Eric alluded to, this AstroPy affiliated packages. And what that is is it's a way to bring projects uh, under the umbrella of AstroPy and apply some of the AstroPy process, coding standards, and infrastructure uh, to those packages without having them uh, be constrained uh, to be within the core. Organization and leadership. So even though AstroPy uh, is expressly a community project, um, a sort of an anarchy or a complete democracy uh, won't work for a large project. And so we do have an organization and leadership project uh, process. And basically, that means uh, three people, Perry Greenfield, Tom Robitaille, and Eric Tallerud, who serve as the, the project coordinators. And uh, by agreement, they basically have ultimate uh, authority to resolve disputes and make decisions when it needs to be. Of course, uh, you know, in, in reality, uh, we've basically always been able to come to consensus on difficult design decisions uh, through either GitHub discussions or uh, the AstroPy dev uh, mailing list. So last, but certainly not least, uh, in terms of the AstroPy project is community. And what we're all about is uh, trying to blur the line between astronomers, which are the users, and software developers. And so that's really going to be the focus of the second half of my talk. So moving on to talk about the AstroPy infrastructure goals. So <coughs> um, we want AstroPy to still be the basic set of Python packages when today's first graders are starting their PhD theses you know, in 10 or 15 years. And so that really does uh, demand a solid infrastructure. And so starting, <coughs> the starting point for that is data structure integration. And essentially what that means is uh, that if you read a data table uh, from FITS file or you read it from VO table or you read an ASCII table, that you get out a single common structure uh, that all of the, the different parts and applications can use. It also means things like if you see a unit anywhere within AstroPy, uh, you know, that's a single class that can be dealt with and has a, you know, a reliable API. Documentation. Documentation is, uh, is very important. Uh, sorry, going back, coding style. Um, many of our developers, uh, again, are astronomers that don't necessarily have training or, or good, good coding style coming in. And so the AstroPy project establishes, uh, you know, sort of fair, fairly rigorous standards for coding style as well as documentation. And we also have infrastructure for tests. And at this time, uh, you know, we have several thousand tests that get, get run essentially with, with every uh, new potential commit. Um, <clears throat> we see it over and over again uh, on the discussions, uh, you know, in GitHub when you get a new contributor coming, uh, they, they make a pull request and they're excited and usually the first comment is, great, can you uh, write some documentation and test for that? And, uh, you know, they learn. Uh, so that's good. So another important priority for the AstroPy project is making it easy to install and making it install reliably. So the, the first thing that we actually decided at the, at the very first meeting uh, of AstroPy uh, was to, to minimalize the dependency set for importing the core libraries. And right now, 
The only thing that you absolutely positively need in order to import AstroPy at the Python command line is NumPy. Um, we do make use of SciPy and Matplotlib throughout, and so those are sort of, those are dependencies that you, you pretty much want to have if you're going to be using a lot of AstroPy. But beyond that, there are very few packages um, that are required to make full use of the AstroPy core. I guess HDF5 is, is one specific example where if you uh, use the, the AstroPy HDF5 file reader, obviously you need the HDF5 library underneath that. Um, one of the important parts of making it easy to install is being sure that it's actually going to run properly on, on everybody's machine. And so uh, we have uh, you know, continuous integration set up on uh, Travis and Jenkins. Uh, on Linux, Mac, and Windows. So it's, uh, you know, this, this kind of infrastructure is really great because every time you put in your pull request, it automatically gets run through all the tests, and that gives you a little green checkbox if it's good to merge, and um, those are nice things to have. Finally, uh, we need to make it re easy to reuse and package with a, a nice uh, inclusive license. So going on to the, uh, the actual core package, so these are, the, these are the classes, utilities, packaging, and documentation that provide framework for astronomical software and research analysis. So I'm not sure if you can read this, but the, uh, the core of the core um, are these seven modules here, starting with constants. So that provides uh, a sort of astrophysical and physical constants, which are useful uh, units. And actually, Mike is going to talk about that more tomorrow, so I won't say any more, but it's a fantastic package that everyone is really excited about. Um, the n-dimensional data sets, this is, this is one of the, uh, the key things in AstroPy, which is uh, representing astronomical images or, or really any n-dimensional data cube which has physical axes. So that could be spatial axes, it could be spectral wavelength, any of that. Um, data tables, um, that's something that I've been uh, uh, partly responsible for, and that um, is representing um, <coughs> heterogeneous data sets, you know, tabular data in a way that's, a, that's essentially a wrapper around ND array, but it's, uh, or, you know, structured arrays, but more convenient to work with. Uh, times and dates, um, that provides sort of a common set of utilities that can do high precision uh, time handling. So, we actually use uh, two 64-bit um, values, which is essentially calling the SOPA library underneath. And so uh, we'll be able to maintain essentially a 20 picosecond resolution over the time scale of the universe, which hopefully is enough. Um, <laughs> coordinates. Uh, astronomers all need coordinates, and so we have a package set up for that. And finally, the world coordinate system. Uh, we need to attach those coordinates to our images and spectra. Um, Astronomy has a, a wonderful variety of uh, file formats, and uh, we want to make it easy for people to read those with uh, no muss and fuss. Uh, so that's our connecting up. Um, <clears throat> then we have a, a part of the core which is really about computations and utilities, and this is, includes cosmology and then astrostatistics tools. Uh, these are a little bit less mature. Uh, and then finally, the nuts and bolts, and these are things that are not really user-facing, but uh, really important for the for the development, including a, a configuration system, I/O registry, logging, Python warnings, so on. One of the one of the things that we've done is uh, AstroPy consists of of sort of a, an agglomeration of really mature projects like PyFits, um, which had been around for years and years and and uh, have a very stable API uh, and things that are just brand new, like AstroPy modeling. So uh, in our documentation page, we provide this sort of uh, this chart here, going from green, which is totally mature, blue, which is pretty stable, uh, orange, which is actively developed, and you may see API changes, and then things that are just planned. Um, so moving on to the affiliated packages. Um, <clears throat> essentially, these are, pack these are packages which are uh, brought under the umbrella of the AstroPy project, but aren't part of the core AstroPy package. And so, Eric, um, the, the Ginga project will be one. Um, one of the, the reasons for having this is uh, there, there can be sort of high-level functionality, and a, a perfect example is 
is querying the VO, and, and we'll get to that later today. Oh, five minutes. Oh, dear. Okay. Um, and so the, the idea being you can um, have different high-level packages which meet many of the coding standards for AstroPy, um, but may address a problem in a different way. And there's, there's room for inclusion, and there's room for those packages to you know, mature within this uh, infrastructure. And I have a list here. I will just skip that. So community, this is, this is what it's about. Um, and the first part of that is growing the developer base. And I probably don't have to preach to the choir here that GitHub has been an amazing tool and uh, really lets us um, develop this package and, and, uh, and review pull requests and so forth. We've made a lot of efforts to lower in the barriers to contributions by having a really good hopefully uh, developer documentation that explains to people how to do this, uh, how to contribute. Uh, there's an edit this page on GitHub, which is kind of a nifty little thing on our web pages uh, that brings up the file to edit on GitHub. And then uh, we also have a label called Easy that we use uh, that lets people that, that just want to, that are newcomers and want to contribute something find pretty easy issues. Uh, the, probably a, a really important thing, I think, We've succeeded in having a welcoming, patient, and respectful attitude uh, to people that come in and uh, want to contribute. It's, it's a really important thing. Let me tell you about statistics. Uh, I think that AstroPy has succeeded in terms of attracting an open source developer community. We have a total of 40 contributors right now on GitHub. Uh, there are 18 with at least 10 commits and uh, 8 with over 100 commits and 191 people on AstroPy dev. Pretty good, and this is the, the GitHub Pulse on AstroPy. And what makes me happy about this is the, the broad base. There, in this plot, there's uh, nine people with at least 20 commits in the last month, and we have a lot of a lot of pull requests, a lot of activity, and a lot of issues. Um, this, I was surprised to to look at this and then to look at NumPy and see we were in the sort of the same league, although it's not a fair comparison because that's a mature project and. It's a lot easier to contribute to something new. Um, this is the crush of AstroPy, someone that receives email about all of, you know, all, all of the activity on GitHub. This is how my uh, inbox looks when I wake up in the morning some days. Uh, you can see the uh, people in Europe have started talking overnight. So it's, a, it's just a lot, of, it's a lot of activity, and that's good. Um, but of course, AstroPy has no meaning without users, and so uh, we're trying to get the word out as much as possible through all the social media outlets. Okay, uh, we have about 300 visits a day to our web pages. Um, I think one of the efforts that we need to work on more is, is uh, you know, in in this outreach and getting a more cohesive effort in terms of tutorials, uh, you know, analysis threads, and so on. AstroPy has been trying to expand its horizons into slightly unusual areas, at least. Uh, so the first is that we uh, got two Google Summer of Code students this summer, so I don't have time to talk about that. The other is that um, we actually submitted a, a paper about AstroPy uh, detailing the functionality and some of the methods behind the madness to uh, a respectable astro astronomy journal, Astronomy and Astrophysics. Uh, this, is, this is a mainstream journal, and our goal is to get it accepted and uh, enhance visibility of astronomical software development as an activity in itself, and also generate citations for uh, astronomers who contribute, which is uh, you know their bread and butter of uh, getting their H index up higher. So this is a little bit unusual. There's not a, a huge precedent for this, but we're hoping to, to set one. So one of the things I think is really great about AstroPy is the institutional synergy. And so uh, you probably are aware that we we do have a close relationship with the Space Telescope Science Institute, um, and, and Space Telescope has really been a leader in the use of Python um, in astronomy, and, and that's really largely due to the vision of Perry Greenfield. Um, so Space Telescope actually, uh, a couple years ago, migrated several of their large projects uh, from their internal version control system into AstroPy, and you know, that's something that's not so easy to do for a project manager that has pressure from NASA and other people. So that, that's really fantastic. And, and uh, I think I want to, I, I mean, I, I keep on harping on this theme, but trying to generate sort of more of this synergy between community and, and large projects and, and institutions. 
Uh, it's worth noting uh, for anyone that's looking for a job potentially that Space Telescope is hiring for people to work on AstroPi. So uh, it's a good opportunity and, and they can probably support uh, remote, uh, remote working if you uh, don't want to live in Baltimore. So let me close off with the, uh, the current status and the future. Um, so I think that a lot of our initial project infrastructure goals uh, have been met. Um, AstroPi started off two and a half years ago. I think we've come a long way. We have a very active developer community. Um, AstroPi already provides a significant mature functionality in, and a lot of exciting new bits that are coming along quite nicely. Uh, but in terms of you know, the, the mission statement, um, the legacy of IRAF and IDL at Astronomy Library and a lot of other stuff that's out there um, that needs to essentially uh, you know, be replaced in order to have an end-to-end -end analysis stack, you know, that's, that's not an easy job, and, and that's going to take a little while. Uh, and coordinating this effort is, is, of course, going to remain a challenge. So I want to close, actually, with the, um, the title slide from Perry's talk last year at the, uh, I think the, it was at the first astronomy mini symposium. It says, AstroPi hurting snakes or astronomers, which is more difficult? Um, and I think the AstroPi has a good start and a long road ahead. Close there. Thank you. Any questions for the speaker? Yeah. Are uh, you? I have two questions. So first, do you know whether AstroPi is only a major effort of the community to create one astronomical Python library, or are there still this effort fragmented? And the second question is, what is the vision of the final scope of AstroPi? So your question is too long, and I'll never remember. So you have to ask them one at a time. So the first is, um, do I, is there, uh, are there other major community efforts uh, r with regards to a, a package? Is that your question? Uh, well, of course, there's SunPy, and then there are other um, ones that are that are focused in a slightly different direction, like YT. Um, I'm not aware of any other big big sort of community-based efforts. Uh, if someone knows, you can raise your hand in terms of, you know, like trying to provide the core functionality. I think that's it. So part two. And what is your vision of the final scope of AstroPi? Should it be focused on the specific topic, image processing? Or yeah, well, the, I think that the, um, if, you want, if you want sort of one statement, um, we, wanna, we want to replace quite a lot of the functionality that is currently in, in the IDL Astronomy Library and IRAF. And, and part of uh, the, the funding that's available uh, at Space Telescope is related to JWST. And so they're um, you know, developing all the tools that are needed to process uh, you know, that mission data in, in, sort of, you know, in, the, in the, the sense that is done currently in IRAF. But I want to see this available for ground-based telescope data and, uh, and space-based telescope data. Yeah? Uh, so you, I think you alluded to the fact that you do continuous integration on Windows machines. Um, uh, I was wondering how, that, how you do that. Is that well, there's a, yeah, I think that um, uh, Eric, Eric, Bray, Eric Bray does that. that. It's a, a, a Jenkins box. instance. He has a Jenkins yeah. instance on a Windows machine. Well, yeah. Research. How would you characterize that community beyond so, those, those heavy lifting projects? Yeah, th so the question is about how to characterize the community for uh, beyond the heavy, list, heavy lifting project, in particular, Space Telescope. And the answer is that, um, you know, two of the biggest contributors are Tom Robitaille and Eric Tollerud, and neither of those are affiliated with Space Telescope. And, uh, you know, and I think, and, and myself, 
I think I'm number four, and I'm uh, I'm a scientist at the Chandra X-ray Center, and I'm you know I just have a have an overall interest in seeing uh, Python move forward in you know in this project. So I think that there's a there's actually a really good mix in our project between uh, very active people that are uh, just at at different institutions throughout the world uh, going at it for very different reasons. So I, are you using AstroPy in any of your, uh, the projects that you're paid to, yeah. to do? I am now. I mean, I'm, uh, you know, I'm converting it just in the sense of the, the core utilities. I started using the, the table class all the time now, and, you know, I'm seeing the benefits of that in my own work. And, and, I, and I know that, uh, you know, for sure, Tom Robitaille and Eric are both, uh, you know, dog fooding. I mean, they're they're using this uh, this tools in their own work, and uh, and in fact, uh, Tom Robitaille is doing everything in Python three, and he's sort of uh, he's doing his research with Python three, which is pretty cool, and he's he's making it happen. So I think I have to cut myself off because it must be time, and you can thank the speaker. Thank you.